Hey, it's Marilla Minnelli, and today I'm going to show you how I quickly create and refresh some warm brunette shades. And I'm also going to show you my go-to TZ light without the tees using all Kenra color. Now let's go ahead and get started. As you can see, my model has a super cute shag haircut that I think looks so gorgeous on her. And she also is naturally a dark brunette and has some grown out highlights. It's been about eight months since she's got them done. So what we're looking to do here is just enhance her haircut that she's got going on, give her a little added brightness and bring up some of these highlights all while maintaining that dimension. So the way that I'm gonna do that is Overall, look and see how her hair naturally lays and falls because I'm looking to enhance this haircut. So I want to see exactly where her bangs are at and that face frame and overall create a halo sectioning all surrounded on her haircut and how it falls. I like to think of this background as a frame to a picture. I want to keep it nice and dark so that her face pops, but I want to add some brightness on that interior. For this project, I'm going to be using Kenner Professional Beyond Bond Lightener at a 1 to 2 mixing ratio with 20 volume developer so that way I can get a really gorgeous lift for these warm golden highlights that we're going to create. So the way I'm going to do that is using this Dreamweaver comb. I'm really obsessed with it right now and taking a zigzag section that's about a half an inch thick and then weaving right on top of that. So basically you're starting off with a zigzag slice and then using the comb to create a weave. And what this is going to do is create the tees without the tees in addition to another favorite tool of mine, which is this Koo board and it has little teeth on it. So this actually helps push up the hairs right to the root allowing for a rooted foliage. And if you don't have these tools, no problem. You can still recreate them with a traditional weaving comb along with a tease and then a board. I'm gonna continue on with the same technique on the other side. And this angle really shows you how halo type of sectioning that I have going on and how much background that I have. But overall, this would be perceived as a diagonal back highlight that's sitting right on top of that occipital. Keep in mind the sectioning is really working around her haircut so you can really change the type of halo sectioning that you create. Hers is actually pretty shallow so she has a lot of depth going on because again she has tons and tons of layers and since her hair is super dark I really wanted to create that frame around her face. So I'm going to continue on and this is where I'm going to change up my sectioning just a little bit. I'm actually going to be taking some V-shaped partings in this interior. I think the key here when creating the tees without the tees is really being able to weave onto a thicker section. So don't be afraid to truly take that half an inch slice and then weave right on top of that. A little tip when using this type of comb, if you do have the Dream Weaver, is you're going to want to use it about six inches or so away from the scalp so that way it can give you that nice pull apart motion if that makes any sense as well as the teeth from the coup board pushing up any of those loose hairs so that way you're really just highlighting the longer pieces of hair I have tons of other videos showing how I do TZ lights. If you really want to know how to do TZ lights and then tips, of course, on how to comb them out. But I promise you this technique right here is a true upgrade from those videos because when we are ready to shampoo her out, we are definitely not going to be spending an extra 20 minutes at the shampoo bowl having to detangle. So this is a huge game changer for me. So once I get both of those highlights on each side, I'm then gonna start going in horizontal, just kind of bringing those two sections together. The whole idea here is that I don't wanna overwhelm her hair with too many highlights. I just want them to stand out, pop, and complement her haircut. So we're not looking to put too many in here. So the overall goal is to create enough background so she has a nice graduation of some highlights here and there that are low maintenance, they're easy to grow out, 
and it also just kind of melts right into that exterior, which is gonna be all of her natural brunette shade. So I got her entire back section completely done. She has about, I'm gonna guess, six foils going on, maybe seven total. So from ear to ear in the back section of that halo. So not too many. Again, we wanna keep that depth and background going on. So now I'm gonna continue on to the sides. So you can see here, I'm starting up pretty high here. And again, it's cause she has tons of layers. I don't want to overwhelm her frame with too many blonde pieces. So I'm keeping this pretty high up exactly where that sectioning started. I'm gonna complete this section by starting to add in the highlights in the fringe area. So in this front section, it's gonna have a total of two side-by-side -side highlights. But the key thing here with fringe is, fringe is becoming really, really popular lately. So when you get ready to highlight it, something you wanna keep in mind again is that background. So I want these highlights to veil right on over that dark natural hair color she has. So I'm gonna leave a big chunk of it out. If you want to have a lot of blonde there, I still like to leave at least a small slice as my background for the fringe area. So just something to keep in mind. If you want your highlights to really be visible and to stand out, you need the background. I can't emphasize that enough. So if you want them to be really, really blendy, then of course you can go a little bit closer to the hairline. For this entire side section, everything from this point out is gonna be diagonal, kind of mirroring like a diamond section. You can almost see that diagonal from the back and the front meeting in a V in the center on the side. However, when I get to a good starting point, I want to continue on with the same pattern that I did in the back, which is creating the background with triangular sections. So I'm gonna highlight over that wider section, but also leaving out that triangular piece. So that way the dark background just slightly starts to disappear into that point. So that's what really kind of makes this technique so beautiful is because not only are we adding in light pieces, but we're creating shapes with background of triangles. So that's why I really love this. So even though I'm going in diagonally and then horizontally on this very, very top part, now I'm gonna finish off vertically. Now, depending on exactly where you're standing, either in front or on the side of your client, basically these are gonna create really cool ribbons. And again, she kind of just shakes out her haircut wherever it falls. So that's why I really wanna create different directions on how I'm placing these foils. So if you want to learn more about how highlights are placed and the effects they create, I actually have a YouTube tutorial specifically on that and it's super, super helpful if you're new to highlighting. Now I'm gonna let her process for about 40 minutes. I don't need too much lift. I'm looking for a nice solid level seven and I'm gonna take her back to the shampoo bowl, remove all of her foils, and like I mentioned, we didn't have to do any detangling because this technique is so easy to use, but it gives you that same look of a teasy light without the tease. What I'm gonna be mixing up is Demi Permanent 7B and 6GG, equal parts. We just really want to embrace that warmth that she got has going on. This is mixed up one to two with nine volume developer. And yes, I use a scale and yes, I use a whisk because I like to measure everything so I have consistency with each and every single client. I'm applying her toner right at the bowl and the reason why I just love this technique so much is because I am not using any other colors. This is a one color toner, which makes it super simple. There's no color mount, there's no root tap or shadow root. I'm literally applying this from roots to ends. And even though her hair is naturally really dark and we are using a level six and seven, this is going to act as a shine treatment for her overall hair. So yes, I'm applying this from roots to ends, but really kind of focusing more on where those highlights are at but I still want to get that nice, beautiful, warm light reflection even on her dark hair. So I'm going to apply this and leave it on room temperature for about 15 minutes. You can actually process this anywhere from five to 20 minutes, really all depending on how much saturation you're looking for. So that's the beauty of the Demi Permanent is the choice is really up to you. 
If you want a really sheer tone, five minutes will do it. And if you want something more saturated, you can definitely mix this up even one to one and leave it on for a full 20 minutes, even on dry hair. So you have lots of options with this Demi Permanent. It's ammonia free and it's amazing for the hair. So as soon as she's done processing, I'm going to do a final rinse out and one more conditioner. And then I'm gonna take her back to my chair to do her final style. For all my models, I like to start off with blow dry spray. This is an argon oil that has evaporative silicones and it has thermal protection. And now I'm layering on perfect blowout so we can have a nice bouncy velvety blowout and finish. And then I just layered in some one and one quarter inch curls and finish her off with dry texture spray for that added grit and texture to this super cute shag that she has going on. And here's the final result on how I quickly created some highlights and refreshed this warm, rich brunette shade complete with teasy lights without the tease in a halo section for this super cute shag hair cut that she's got going on. So just to give you a little recap, I used Simply Blonde Beyond Bond Lightener at a one to two mixing ratio with 20 volume developer. And then for her final demi-permanent glaze, we used 6GG and 7B at a one to two mixing ratio with nine volume developer and processed her for 15 minutes right at the bowl and then finished her style off complete with blow dry spray, perfect blowout and for her curls and final finish, we used dry texture spray. Let me know down in the comments what you think of this look. I would love to know. So I really hoped you enjoyed this hair tutorial. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe and be sure to check out my other hair tutorials right here on this channel. And I will see you next time.